Indie developer Mateus Linda has just released a demo of the game he's been working on for two and a half years called Chained Echoes, which is planned to release at the end of next year. It takes inspiration from games of the 90s, featuring a retro art style and music reminiscent of RPGs of that time. This looked like something I would play, so I decided to give the demo a try to get an idea of what it would be like. I'm a big fan of anything relating to pixel art, so the in-game screenshots caught my attention. That said, after playing the demo and exploring most of the available areas, nothing about the game stood out. As I spent more time looking at the different environments and characters, it didn't deliver the impact I was expecting. This shouldn't be confused with me saying the art is bad, because it isn't, but it was just a bit too plain. The characters looked generic without any defining characteristics, where they could just pass for NPCs that were seen around town. Similarly with the world, nothing about it stuck out to make the places I explored memorable. However, I did like the tiny additions to the ambiance, such as birds flying away when characters got too close, or seeing the wheat in the fields move to the wind. Monsters are also clearly visible, hanging out in their natural habitat and won't attack unless characters get too close to them. It's entirely possible to avoid combat altogether by walking around and away from them. This should sound very familiar to those of you who have played Chrono Trigger, a game that originally released on the Super Nintendo, because that's exactly how it worked there. That's not the only similarity Chained Echoes has with it though. The main character, Glenn, also has a skill called Whirlwind Slash, which looks exactly the same as Chrono's Cyclone ability that has a similar function. Maybe Glenn is also a callback to Glenn from Chrono Trigger, but there's no evidence to support this. It would be cool though, like if he got turned into a frog temporarily during the story or something. Both games also use a turn-based combat system, though that's more of a superficial commonality. Unfortunately, the game doesn't have anything reminiscent of techs, which were basically team attacks performed by party members. What it does have that adds that unique flavor to combat is an overdrive system that provides strong benefits like reduced cost for skill usage, receiving reduced damage, and increased damage output. During combat, there is an overdrive bar on the top left of the screen which shows how synchronized the party is. Each time they attack or get attacked, an arrow on the bar moves to the right. When that arrow is in the green, overdrive triggers. It's a pretty cool system, but it wouldn't be fun unless there was some downside to balance it out. If the arrow continues to move to the right, it will eventually hit the red zone, which causes the team to overheat. During this time, the party will have all incoming damage increased significantly. To prevent this, some skills will randomly be highlighted yellow, which indicates using that ability will move the arrow to the left instead. Sometimes these skills aren't the best options to use in a situation, but it's better than the alternative of overheating. So it's all about balancing actions in combat instead of just using the strongest attack and hitting overdrive. Characters can also guard or switch out to move the arrow to the left, so using certain skills isn't the only option available to keep that sweet overdrive buff from going away. Switch is a neat mechanic that works in a similar way to those that are familiar with Final Fantasy X's combat system. This allows active characters to be swapped with characters out of combat who can then act immediately. But it's not possible to just switch an active character to any inactive character. The party has a formation with four characters in front and four characters in back. Characters can only switch with other characters that are behind them in the formation, so setting this up does require some thinking in terms of how you want to play. Besides that, combat follows the typical rules that are expected of a standard turn-based system, with characters taking turns beating each other up. As monsters get defeated, they may drop items, but there are no experience points awarded after completing a battle. There will be skill points awarded in the final version, but the skill progression system is not in the demo, so this was excluded from the rewards. The party also completely recovers after combat, and any dead characters will be brought back to life, which was a little surprising. It kind of reduces the value of consumable items and makes the game much less challenging, but maybe there will be something that discourages leaving the characters dead. Other than the various combat encounters, the demo consisted of a small explorable island with some quests. Besides one marker on the viewable map that points to the start of a main quest, there were no objective markers telling me where to go, which worked out pretty well. It gave me the nostalgic feeling of having to talk to NPCs to gather information on where to go or what to do next. I did get lost a few times, but it felt really rewarding when I was able to figure it out. This lack of handholding encouraged exploration and led me to some side quests which I might have otherwise never found. In games where objective markers are used, I typically always bolt it from one quest to another, potentially missing any optional content along the way. The demo build is a pre-alpha version of the game, which is still very early in the development process, meaning there's still time to make improvements, so seeing some faults aren't alarming. Its primary focus was on the gameplay, so a lot remains to be seen, 
but from what I've experienced so far, the game is unimpressive. Again, that's not to say that it's bad, but there was very little to hold my interest. The music was decent, but it also wasn't that notable, and the world was pretty generic. However, the combat does show some promise with its overdrive mechanic, and I'm curious to see how it can be used to overcome the challenges the heroes face. With so many missing pieces, it's hard to form any concrete opinions of the game. The world is much bigger than what's available in the demo, and there are still gameplay systems like skill progression and mechs that can't be accessed. Chained Echoes has a lot of potential to be realized, and it'll be interesting to see everything come together to hopefully create an amazing game to be remembered.